Ecosystems are extremely fragile and complex, and small changes can throw them off balance. Most plant and animal species play an important role in their ecosystems, but of course some species are more important than others. In today's video, I will be focusing on animals that fit into two categories, and these two categories are keystone species and umbrella species. A keystone species is a species that has a disproportionately large effect on its natural environment relative to its abundance, and these are usually animals that have a direct effect on other animals in their ecosystem, or they're animals that directly affect the environment in which they're found. An umbrella species is a species selected for making conservation-related decisions, typically because protecting these species indirectly protects the many other species that make up the ecological community of its habitat. These are usually animals that directly benefit other animals, and if they were to disappear, the ecosystem would collapse. There are many animals around the world that fit into both of these categories, but in today's video I will be focusing on three of the most important. For our first group of animals, we can head into many of the world's rivers and oceans, as we will be taking a look at the salmon. Salmon is the common name for a group of fish, and these fish can be split into two genera. There are seven recognised species, but there are many other fish that are called salmon that aren't actually salmon. These fish differ in size and shape with the smallest species being the pink salmon, and the largest species being the king salmon. Salmon are arguably the most important fish species in the world, and this is mostly due down to their strange life cycle. Salmon are considered anadromous, and this means that they live in both fresh and salt water. They start their lives in fresh water feeding on small invertebrates, and after a few months or a few years, they eventually make their way out to the ocean. This is where most species live the majority of their lives, but they return to fresh water when it's time to spawn. When they return to fresh water, their bodies and behaviours start to change, and this is usually when they exhibit their most beautiful colours. After spawning, the adult fish usually die, and they give their nutrients back to the river. Salmon play a very important role in both freshwater and saltwater ecosystems, and from the time they hatch to the time they die, they are either benefiting or controlling other species. When they hatch, they prey on invertebrates and other fish, and they also provide food for other predatory fish and birds. When they make their way out to the ocean, they provide food for pinnipeds, seabirds, predatory fish and even orcas, and the salmon themselves feed on cephalopods and smaller fish. When they return to rivers, it really is quite an amazing sight, and many land mammals take advantage of this event. Wolves and bears will target salmon in rivers around the world, and it really is quite a majestic event to witness. Even when these fish are not taken out by predators and they die naturally, all of their nutrients are given back to the river, and many plants and animals benefit from this. These fish are essential for the health and function of their ecosystems, and if they were to disappear, many animals would suffer. Unfortunately for most of the animals in their ecosystem, humans are also very fond of salmon. We have had a massive effect on their numbers over the years, both by hunting them directly and affecting their natural habitat. The number of salmon caught by humans has only increased over the years, but thankfully so has the number of salmon in aquaculture farms. If we get our salmon from farms and not the wild, it does not directly affect the ecosystem, and most wild animals will benefit from this choice. The building of bridges and dams can also negatively affect these fish, but thankfully we are finding ways around this. It is important that we try and protect these animals, as they are arguably the most important fish in the world. For our next group of animals, we will be heading to the northern Pacific Ocean, as we will be taking a look at the sea otters. Sea otters are among the smallest marine mammals, but they are the heaviest otters in the world. They have the densest fur in the animal kingdom, and this is an adaptation that helps them to survive in cold waters. They spend a large portion of their day grooming and conditioning their fur, and this helps them to stay warm and dry. A sea otter can live its entire life without leaving the water, and its fur is one of the main reasons why it can do this. They trap air in between their layers of fur, and this helps them to keep their skin dry and also helps to keep them warm. Sea otters tend to inhabit coastal environments, and this is where they find their chosen prey. These animals will dive to the seafloor to forage, and they're usually on the lookout for invertebrates, mollusks, and crustaceans. They famously use tools to dislodge and dispatch their prey, and this gives them an edge over their competition. 
Sea otters are important to almost all ecosystems in which they're found, but there's one ecosystem that needs them more than others. Kelp forests are mysterious and magical ecosystems, and they provide shelter for many marine animals. Most marine ecosystems are very open and unforgiving, but kelp forests offer shelter. This is why they're usually bustling with life, and they're home to many species that can't be found anywhere else in the world. Sea otters are crucial to these environments, and this is mostly due down to what they feed on. Sea otters love to snack on sea urchins, and these sea urchins are grazers of the kelp. Because most sea urchins have spiky defences, not all predators can take them down. Thankfully, the sea otters have the tools to dispatch them, and this ensures the safety of the kelp forests. If the sea otters weren't around, the sea urchins could soon take over, and they would completely obliterate the kelp forests. Thankfully, there are a few other predators that can dispatch these sea urchins, but the sea otters are the most efficient. This is why they are so important to these unique marine ecosystems, and hopefully they will be protecting kelp forests for many years to come. For our final species, we will be heading to the southeastern United States, as we will be taking a look at the American alligator. There are many different species of crocodilian dotted around the world, but few of them are as important as the American alligator. These animals can be found in a variety of aquatic ecosystems, but wherever they are found, they are apex predators. They play a very important role as ecosystem engineers in wetland ecosystems, and this is mainly through the creation of alligator holes. These holes provide both wet and dry habitats for other organisms, and they are used long after the alligators have left. All the way through the alligator's life cycle, it affects the function of its ecosystem, as when it's young, it provides prey for other predators, and when it fully matures, it becomes an apex predator. They feed on various species of fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals, and as the years have gone on, they have become more important. Famously, Florida has an invasive species problem, but this problem would be a lot worse without the American alligator. This predator feeds on many invasive fish and reptiles, and in a lot of cases, the American alligator is the sole predator of many invasive species. If the American alligator wasn't around, then other invasive predators could easily take over, but thankfully, this reptile still remains strong. Even though Florida does seem like a very crazy place, it would be a lot worse without this reptile, and I'm sure it will continue to protect the southeastern United States for many years to come. Of course, there are many other animals that could have made it into this video, so if you think you know of any, then let me know down in the comments below. But for now, thank you for watching, and until next time, goodbye.